Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhaira Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played long time back. Now this was rapid. Uh, it was a 10 plus 5 seconds increment. So 10 minutes on the clock for both the sides and 5 seconds increment per move. Now I started off uh, with e4 here. My opponent responds with b6. I went with d4 because I got space in the center. Why not take it? Opponent plays a pawn forward e6 there and I went with c4. Again, going for the um, center as much as possible, developing all my pawns, pushing all of them uh, uh, towards the center. Opponent plays uh, bishop b7. Uh, I went with bishop to d3, which is just trying to develop the bishop. Maybe then the knight and castling uh, was the initial plan. Uh, here my opponent plays d6. Uh, trying to make sure that open can develop the knight now. Uh, knight has a flexible option of developing either on c6 or on d7 as well. But what it does is blocks this bishop's diagonal, uh, not letting the bishop develop. So then open will have to develop the bishop from g7 here. Uh, I went with knight c3. Uh, open plays knight to d7 as we were expecting because that uh, pawn forward move had created a vacancy for the knight. Now, I started here with knight f3, trying to bring to maybe castle. Uh, open goes with c5, trying to break open the center. And I denied opening up. I thought I'll just play d5 because if my open does take here, I can now take and I will have an open file for the attack with the rook. Open hasn't developed the minor pieces there. So I will be advantageous there. Uh, open saw that coming uh, after I played d5, so responds with e5 so that the center isn't opened up. But what has happened is that I've taken control of the light squares uh, with my pawn structure. Yes, my opponent has control of dark squares, but I have taken, I have pushed my opponent's uh, pieces to a better, uh, to a very worse situation there because um, opponent cannot develop the bishop from here. The light square bishop is also kind of passive, hitting against the, this uh, pawn chain for now. Uh, knight also will find uh, tough to be maneuvered because uh, pawns will be controlling those squares. So development becomes harder when your opponent pushes so much of pawns in early up in the opening. Uh, so I went just with a bishop to c2 for now, uh, making sure that my queen can also be developed. Uh, yes, my dark square bishop is uh, pending for development as well. Uh, g5 looks like one of the squares, but then again, it would be uh, just covered up with the knight and I won't be doing much with it. Maybe pawn pushes will uh, drop back my bishop as well. So uh, I was just waiting on there, what my opponent is trying to do. Uh, opponent plays bishop to e7. Uh, I went with h4. I thought, uh, let me just push up with my pawns here uh, and then maybe cast on the queen side. Uh, that can be a plan as well. So I thought, let me just push the edge pawn now because I've already gained a lot of space in the center. After this, my open plays a knight to f6, which means the open is certainly going to castle. And I thought, okay, let's just spin this knight for now. Maybe then take uh, take it on as well. Open plays a6. I took on the knight. Open takes back with the knight. And here I went with uh, bishop to a4. Now the idea is of if opponent uh, proceeds with the pawn, of course I can take and win extra pawn. Opponent cannot block it with the bishop because my pawn is controlling the square. So knight can come in between and that's what happens. Now I can put my bishop onto c6, but then what happens after my opponent does take, uh, I have to take back with the pawn. And what happens is my beautiful control of the center goes away because the central pawn will be lost uh, and then once it's already on c6 it can hardly be pushed uh, ahead as well because queen uh, and the knight or some other piece will grab this up uh, eventually so i didn't want to do that uh, i went with queen to d2 uh, there maybe preparing to castle uh, either side of the board and now opponent plays queen to uh, c7 uh, hoping that in, if, if I push my pawns from here, then open can cast on the queen side as well. Uh, so I just waited another move. I played queen to e2, uh, which also solidifies the pawn as well, uh, just defending it further. Uh, and here my open castles finally. And as soon as the castling happens, I began up uh, with my g4 pawn now. Now both the pawns uh, h and g will be marching down the king 
uh, there uh, and trying to attack and break open from the uh, king side. Here, my opponent plays a rook to b8, uh, making sure that the bishop maybe can be pushed backwards and then pawn forward, so that if the, some trades happen, opponent will have the rook as well lining up. Uh, I kept on pushing the pawn as planned. G5, opponent plays pawn forward f6, uh, forcing me, asking me if I want to take because if I do, opponent can take back with the knight or the bishop, and opponent will be happy doing that. So if the opponent is happy doing that. You don't let the opponent do that. I just push the pawn forward, g6, which forces him to not capture and push it forward because if you again capture, that's bad. Uh, because I will get my rook on the open file and suddenly this pawn is your weakness. If you try to push it, then I can take. You can take back. I can take back with the knight. You cannot take back with the bishop because you will lose the bishop as well with the rook. So that would be nice uh, repetition, and a nice continuation from there on which would be helpful. So opponent just played pawn forward, uh, h6 trying to close the situation, which allows me to just bring my bishop backwards as well, on to c2, because I knew that long term I'll be eyeing this diagonal now. Uh, here my opponent brings back the bishop on to c8, maybe trying to push the pawn forward next. Uh, so I went with a4 myself, so that if opponent does push, I can take back as well. Uh, opponent goes back with the rook on to a8, uh, because, uh, Sorry, sorry for that. Uh, there was a mouse slip. We were here. Yeah. So after bishop goes back. Now, idea behind rook to a8 was my rook isn't defended here. Uh, I haven't castled. So if some pawn break happens, opponent can take my rook. That was the idea behind uh, moving the rook to a8. Uh, I just pushed my h5 pawn so that uh, my pawn structure is pretty solid here. Uh, and king would have got hardly any space to be moving from here on. Uh, opponent goes back with the knight now onto b8. I went with knight to h4, uh, trying to push my knight onto f5 eventually. Uh, opponent plays bishop onto d7, and here I went with a knight to f5, asking the opponent if he really wants to take. And opponent uh, took that, which was the best move as well, allows me to take back with the pawn. And now, if you see again, I have taken a lot of control of the king side with my pawns. Center pawn is still controlling a lot of stuff. So I have gained a lot of space in the opponent's territory. And that's why white is advantageous here. Now, if you're liking this video till now, I do hope that you have subscribed to the channel already. If you haven't, please do. Uh, that helps me increase the subscriber count and more and more people can watch the videos. Plus, if you press on the bell icon as well, you will be notified on a daily basis because I do put up a one video daily. Now let's go ahead uh, with this game. Uh, open plays knight to d7, uh, and I castle now. Uh, yes, it's uh, very late to castle uh, in the game. Ideally, people do castle very quickly. But if you see here, uh, um, I just wanted to double up, like connect my rooks as well. Uh, also, the structure here is very much closed, so there is no attack going to come. Yes, my king is not kind of safe here. If you see, there's no pawns protecting my king, but there's no attack going to come because I have pushed my, all my pawns already. So my king is pretty much safe there. Uh, here my opponent plays a rook to b8, trying to maybe push the pawns finally, but hasn't yet done. I went with f4, asking my opponent if you, if you want to take, you can, because that's anyway a double pawn for me. If you do take, I take back with the rook. I'll be happy to do that. Uh, even your bishop would be undefended if you just take it. I don't even need to capture the pawn first. I can capture the bishop. So that's another threat. And if you don't take, I am taking it for sure. So opponent goes back with the bishop uh, onto f8, uh, which allows me to take. So I can take as of now. Uh, but then opponent can put the rook as well in the center. So I thought, let me just improve my position first. Uh, let me shift my focus in the center now because the center is going to break open. So I just got my rook onto d1. Opponent gets the rook onto e8. Here I shift my queen onto h2. Now I'm still trying to take control of the square. I don't want to lose that. Also, I'm allowing to take with the rook. If, if, if an opponent takes, I can take back with the rook. So not a threat. Opponent can never push this pawn forward because there will be two attackers to it and only uh, one defender for the opponent. So opponent just plays a rook to b8 there. 
I went with bishop to d3, uh, and that's a slight kind of a maneuver which defends my pawn as well eventually. Uh, also defends uh, the c4 pawn with the bishop so that if pawn breaks happen, I will be in control of it as well. Open plays rook to b7, maybe trying to develop. Uh, here I just went with queen to d2, kind of a waiting move, still hoping and wanting to see what my opponent is trying to do. You don't need to break open situations uh, every time. You sometimes just hold on because your opponent is also bound to do some mistake. You just hold on tight and wait for the right moment. Opponent gets to double up the rooks. Uh, now plays rook to b8. I play b3 there so that my pawn structure is solid. I don't need to bother about what's happening. Opponent plays bishop to e7. And here I just got the other rook onto e1. Open goes back with the bishop, trying to just waste some time. And here I thought, let me just improve the position of my rook. So rook comes to e4. Now I'm trying to double up with the rooks on the e-file. Open gets the rook back uh, in the center by rook playing to e8. I double up. And now open gets the other rook also onto b8. Maybe trying to double up here my, uh, um, by himself. Uh, just trying to plant both the rooks on the e-file. I thought I'll just bring back the bishop. Opponent tries to double up uh, on the e-file as we thought. And I thought, let me just put my king up. It's a close kind of a situation. I just waited here. Opponent gets the queen onto d8. Uh, and I sidestep now with the rook. Uh, Opponent does take, finally. Uh, so, as I said, you just have to wait and open will do mistake. And this was one of them, which allows me to play rook to e6. Now, rook e6 is pretty solid because... I don't want to take and allow my opponent to take control of the open file, but I need to take control of, my, of the open file myself. Now, problem is open cannot take because once you take, I simply take back with the D pawn and suddenly my pawns are again uh, compressing you further. There's no movement remaining for the opponent. And then my knight will hop in eventually and just take over the entire situation. So uh, taking back with uh, is not a good move. Best move as per the computer uh, is what my opponent played, knight to e5, which allows me to take a pawn. And I took with the queen instead of taking with the rook. Everything was possible. Uh, I thought taking with the rook uh, will just mm, not a good option. I thought I just make, wanted to pressurize this further uh, eventually and maybe grab an extra pawn once op the knight moves away from there. So I took on with the queen. Uh, opponent here goes with queen to c7 uh, and I just went with knight to e4 uh, just threatening to maybe take a pawn sometime uh, this is double attack now if you see opponent is only defending with the queen uh, so opponent decided to take the rook uh, which is again bad because this time I'll not take with the d pawn I'll take with the f pawn why because this is a beautiful pawn chain now pressurizing a lot of stuff. Uh, I have a very active knight, uh, active control of the F file, which allows me to uh, maybe sacrifice one of the pieces later on. Maybe I can sacrifice the knight as well, because once opponent takes, I can take back. And that's a good position to be in. You can simply push the pawns and suddenly this bishop will also come into the picture. So nice attack is going on there uh, after uh, the, the maneuver. So I thought, yes, let me just take with the f pawn. And then I just maneuvered my knight uh, on to g3. Open goes again to b8. Just open kept on moving the rook from b to e is what I am observing right now. That not much of movements happening there. Now I went with knight to f5, hitting the bishop. Now bishop is the only piece uh, for my opponent which is defending this pawn chain. If I can dislodge this bishop from here, I am pretty happy. So... Uh, I just went there with my knight uh, and open plays pawn forward. I took on the pawn, open takes back and now I don't want to take. I want open to take because after that I can take back with the pawn and I'm in good situation. Also, so I just slightly moved my queen here. Uh, the idea was uh, the queen and the bishop battery is nice. So what I can do is maybe sacrifice the knight and then push pawn forward and then plan a checkmate from there on. Opponent takes the pawn here, uh, and I took on the uh, pawn there uh, onto h6 with my knight. Uh, the exact plan which I was talking about. Now my opponent does take, allows pawn forward, which is threatening. Now uh, my queen is going to go onto h7 is a check, 
and then Opera doesn't have much space. Basically, it's it's a mate if if Opera allows me to do that. Uh, if a random move, say, I think that's checkmate. Yes, because a pawn is controlling the dark squares already. Queen has come in. You cannot take the queen or the pawn. And look at the advantage of e uh, e6 pawn there, not allowing Opera to escape. So Opera has to be careful here, and Opera takes on the pawn which is again bad because allows the same kind of a maneuver. Queen to h7, the wonderful battery working out uh, cannot be taken. The only move king has legally is to go on to f8 and there comes mate in one from h8. Leaving the king miserable uh, on the last rank, nothing what my opponent could do against this strong pawn attack starting from the beginning uh, till the end. This this spawn chain was nice pressurizing my opponent all through and yeah it, it felt happy winning this game because uh, there was a complete control throughout in this game i hope you enjoyed the video do let me know your feedback keep watching and sharing do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now and i shall see you tomorrow with some interesting and instructive content like always thanks for your time take care bye bye